So, in the previous lecture we have established the lemma that for uh, that the which showed that the error term here between between the state and the and the conditional expectation of the of the state given the information this error term is a function of only the noise in the system and the function also does not depend on the policy that is being used. So, it is independent of, uh, of the policy. So, as a result of this we can now revisit, uh, revisit the dynamic programming equation we had written out at time step n minus 2. So, we had observed that we had observed that this term here the first one let me underline this with a with a different color. Um, we, we had observed that uh, we had observed that this green term here is is independent of u n minus 2. So, it does that does not depend on u n minus 2. The yellow terms did depend on u n minus 2 and the blue term was uh, the, 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 green, the last green term is also independent of u uh, n minus 2. The question mark was about the blue term. The blue term uh, we were not sure if that was dependent on u n minus 2 and we just concluded that the, the blue term actually has this error here x n minus 1 minus the conditional expectation of x n minus 1 given i n minus 1. This it has this particular error here. We just concluded that this term is actually independent of of uh, of u n minus 2. So, as a consequence of it the entire blue term I can make that into a green term because that also does not depend on u n minus 2. So, we are therefore left with only these two yellow terms which depend on u n minus 2 and then we can now observe that well this uh, these two yellow terms are actually the same as what we had got when we when we had uh, when we are looking at the problem with perfect state information and therefore once again we uh, the, we, we can conclude that continuing the dynamic programming dp algorithm we once again conclude that mu n uh, un minus 2 star is a function mu n minus 2 star of i n minus 2 and it is in fact equal to a once again it has the same sort of form as we got for for time step n minus n minus 1 we conclude that u n minus 2 is a function of the conditional expectation uh, uh, of, of the state x n minus 2 given i n minus 2 just the same way as we did for time step n minus 1. So, you get we conclude that this is actually equal to uh, equal to some, some function uh, some linear function let me write it here let me write l n minus 2 times the conditional expectation of x n minus 2 given i n minus 2. So, now that this has been done we can now substitute for u n minus 2 back again into this particular into, into the equation dynamic programming equation that we had and compute j n minus 2 as a function of i n minus 2 and then proceed again to step n minus 3 and so on. But in each step all the arguments that we have used so far will continue to hold and therefore we would we would get we would be able to conclude the optimal policy is in fact uh, a linear function of the conditional conditional state the conditional expectation of the state given the information and all the observe all these observations that we have made which is that the optimal policy of is this uh, is this of the problem is the same as the one with perfect state information all of these observations will also continue to hold. So, in other words for all times t this the uh, these particular observations that we have made in fact are valid for all times t. So, for all times at every step every step ok the optimal policy is equal to the optimal policy of the perfect perfect state information case applied to the conditional 
expectation of the state given the information. All right. So, this here what we have shown so far is, is, a, is a landmark result. It, it has shown we have shown that essentially the way to proceed with a problem with uh, where we do not have we, we do not have perfect state information is to in some sense ignore the fact that we have we do not have perfect state information just work with what we have namely we, we make the best estimate of the state and assume that was the true state and then apply uh, apply the, our, uh, the, the control that we would have applied if that were the true state. So, this uh, that is that is the form of the optimal policy. In fact, the optimal policy also has a structural uh, a kind of structural feature associated with it. Uh, which uh, which I had uh, which I had mentioned earlier as well. In fact, there is more. If you recall, the optimal policy for the perfect state information case was in fact the same as the optimal policy for the noiseless case. As a consequence of this, we have an equivalence across three different problem classes. We have three different problem classes that give us the same same optimal policy. The first is the problem class where you do not have noise at, in the system. The second is the problem class where you have uh, noise in the system, but you have perfect state information. The third is the problem class where we have uh, uh, noise in the system and we have noisy observations of the state. All of these uh, in all of these three problem classes provided the system is linear and the cost is quadratic and observations are linear in provided these assumptions hold the optimal policy is the same. It is just applied on a different on a different uh, uh, on a on a different entity so in the in the first two cases when you have the state information you apply it on the state itself in the second case you apply it on the on the best estimate of the state in fact the uh, the optimal policy in the problem with imperfect state information can also be uh, understood in a in a different structural sort of form the the uh, the structural form is as follows let me write out the form of the optimal policy so that we can appreciate uh, this kind this structural uh, result that we get so we have at every at every k we have that uh, mu star the optimal control uk star is equal to mu star k of ik and that is equal to as i said lk times expectation of xk given ik where this LK matrix is can be computed in the following way it is minus RK plus BK transpose KK plus 1 BK whole inverse BK transpose KK plus 1 AK and the KK matrices are given recursively. So, we have KN equal to QN and uh, the kk has to be found in the following way you first define pk as ak transpose kk plus 1 bk times rk plus bk transpose kk plus 1 bk the whole inverse bk transpose kk plus 1 ak this is pk and then you, you have kk is given as ak transpose kk plus 1 ak minus pk plus qk. Right. The, uh, so, this is the form of the optimal this is the form of the optimal policy. Now, the, the structural observation that we can make about this is that uh, is that the optimal policy can be understood in in terms of the following in terms of the following block diagram. So, let me draw this diagram for you in a moment. So, first you have you have your state equation. So, the state equation here runs as x k plus 1 equals a k x k plus b k u k plus w k this is your state in uh, uh, this is your state equation. The state equation is powered by noise that comes from outside. 
this this in uh, this state uh, equation when so the x k the previous state the state you have at time k this results along with observation noise results in an observation z k which is equal to c k x k plus v k. Now, this z k will contribute to an uh, contribute to another block that I will call an estimator. Now what goes into this what uh, what else goes into this what goes uh, what else goes into this estimator block well what we also get about the, in this estimator block is the previous control action so in order to write this uh, previous control action the estimator block let's first understand what the estimator block is going to produce the estimator block is going to produce for us the conditional expectation of the state xk given the information i k. Now, this then gets multiplied by l k the gains that we have just computed and that results in the control action u k which goes into this into this particular into this particular equation and uh, and gives rise to the next state. So, this is your u k. Now, u k remember does not come to us immediately we when we are up using the estimator the u k the estimator has information of the controls up and up until that time which means the pre so in which means the control that was applied at the previous until the controls that were applied at the previous time step. So, you have u k along with with a delay this delayed uh, the de the outcome uh, so u k comes to into the estimator with a one step delay. So, you have the uh, with a deal so it a step delay of 1. So, the estimator takes information z k that comes out of the observation block and u k minus 1. So, and of course, it has all the history of the previous uh, information that you it, it also had. So, that is what it accumulates as i k. So, you can see what is going on here. So, this 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 is this is the structure of the optimal policy. So, what the optimal policy is doing is is doing two things separately. The on the on the one hand it is doing an estimation here using an estimator. The estimator takes all the observations that we have so far and uh, and and the control actions that you have applied in the past and uh, produces for you a, an estimate of the state. The, the estimate of the state is then fed into an LK which then uh, which is uh, which then produces the control action that needs to be applied. Now, the remarkable thing here is that the est that your method of producing the best estimate has nothing to do with how you are how it has nothing to do with the control action or has nothing to do with the control policy that you would be choosing. The control policy that you would be choosing is the same as that you would have chosen if even if there was perfect state information. So, in other words the the estimator and the controller here. So, this is here the controller the controller and the estimator here are being designed independently of each other. So, they are the they it uh, and what does it mean for them to be designed independently? Well, we can think of uh, we can think that the estimator here is solving a problem of its own which is the problem of estimating uh, uh, you know coming up with the best estimate of the state uh, given the information. Remember we just showed in in the previous lemma that the estimation error that we would get is the same as the estimation error that we would we would get in a problem. Uh, uh, the the estimation error is really a function of just the noise, so it it does not depend on the control policy that that you would use. So in other words, it it the estimation error in this problem uh, that you would incur has nothing to do with what you the control policy that you would be applying downstream. So this is where we have what we what we have got in this particular case can be called thought of and is often called a separation principle. It, it means that the entire the design of the control the joint design of the controller or the design of the controller for this particular problem can be broken down into two separate designs. 
The first is a design of, 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 a, of a regular controller assuming no estimation is needed, assuming the system is in fact deterministic or, or, of, or a stochastic but with perfect state information. So, it is a, it's a design that is agnostic to how you are estimating the state. So, this controller design does not, uh, the controller design does not care about what is going on, how you are producing your estimates. Whereas, the estimate and the estimation design, the estimation error that you get, well that estimation error has nothing to do with what policy is being used. So, the estimation error, in fact we can think of the estimator as minimizing, uh, in fact we can give a, an, an optimal, optimal optimization based ex, uh, interpretation to this as well. We can show, show that conditional expectation of x k given i k, this is in fact the, the minimum of minimum mean square error estimate. So, it is the uh, it is the arg min of of y the norm of y minus x k the whole square given i k over all over all y. So, if you were to uh, 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 if you were to pick y's that were a function uh, you if you if you are allowed to pick y which is a function of uh, function of i k and uh, in order to minimize this particular error it turns out that the optimal y for you to pick to minimize the squared expected squared error between y and x k is is in fact the conditional expectation of x k given i k. So, so therefore, the estimator here is doing its own thing with uh, independently of what is uh, what is happening with downstream with the controller. The controller is being designed independently of what how the estimate uh, is actually being arrived. So, this as a result is as I said is called a separate the separation principle. The separation principle has a has a an enormously important place in industrial control systems because it essentially is help uh, helping us separate uh, two two different disciplinary tasks. One is a control design task, which is which is which is based on control theoretic principles. The other is an estimation task, which is based on statistical principles. These two are being separated out, and it turns out that they can both be done independently, uh, optimally in the in their own way, and combined in a manner that the resulting that the result is still optimal. This is this is a stronger result than just the certainty equivalence result, which we had seen earlier. Certainty equivalence only said that you can replace all the noise in the system by its mean uh, and then uh, the uh, and the answer that you get from the resulting deterministic system is also op optimal for the stochastic system. Where here in fact what we are getting is that the uh, that the noise here the noise is not being replaced by its mean here is we are we are really saying that you you know the control engineer can do the control task the statistician can do the estimation task. And, and they can both come together and the resulting thing would be optimal for the for the stochastic control problem. So, this this kind of separation usually results in an explosion of technology uh, of technological progress because uh, because e each party that is an expert in 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 its respective sub discipline can continue to uh, can continue to perfect its art regardless of what is happening in the others uh, in, in the other sub discipline. And it, as a result of this, this is one of the most widely applied results uh, in, in 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 the in in practical and theoretical control, uh, uh, and and has a has a special place in all of control theory. Let us, uh, despite all the praises that I am singing about this result, we should we should we should make sure that we understand the premises under which this result has been derived. The result is assuming that uh, we have uh, we have a uh, linear system a system that evolves linearly the noise is independent uh, across time the cost is quadratic the observations are linear and the information that we have at each time step uh, is equal to all the observations that we had so far and the all the actions that you have taken so far so, in under this premise, the the uh, the prop all the conclusions that I've just mentioned continue to hold.
So in the, in the next part what we will do is we will, we will go a little deeper into the, the estimation term here. So far we have just know we only know that the optimal controller is a function of the conditional expectation of, of the state given the information. Now this conditional expectation may be easy to calculate, may not be easy to calculate. So this, this requires a little bit of work and uh, in order to, to see how this can the, the, the calculation of the conditional expectation can also be made simpler and, uh, uh, and more wide ranging. It turns out there that they, we need to make assumptions about the nature of the noise. So far we have only assumed that the noise is independent and zero mean. We have not assumed any specific distribution, probability distribution about the state, about the noise itself. The, we will use the probability distribution of the noise in this part when we will start, when we will try to derive expressions for the conditional expectation uh, of the state given, given the information. As I had mentioned, there is also a certainty equivalence type of angle here because, because we had seen that there is a the optimal controller is in fact a uh, applying a, a, a these, the control that it would have applied if, if, uh, if the system was deterministic. So in fact it is the same as what we would uh, the, the system that uh, it would be the same controller that we would get if we remove all the noise from the system and, and the state was replaced by uh, by its uh, by by its conditional mean, so effectively that is that's that is the certainty equivalence angle in this particular problem. So in in the following lectures we will now uh, we we, uh, we what we will do is we will we will start relaxing some of these assumptions. We will first go into uh, uh, we will first go in depth into in seeing how the conditional expectation of the state given the information can be computed. And then we will start relaxing some of the key assumptions that we have made so far.